evening and welcome to the news on DBS TV. We shall be treating major news stories in Cameroon, Africa and the world, starting with Cameroon. The 2020-2021 school year has effectively resumed across Cameroon and as of now, everything seems to be going on as planned. In the various nursery, primary and secondary schools, the wearing of face masks, washing of hands and the respect of physical distancing in and out of the classroom is taken quite seriously as a preventive measure for coronavirus. When it comes to eating habits in school, it is a different reality. Prior to school reopening, the Cameroon government prescribed hygiene and sanitary rules to stem the spread of COVID-19. Amongst them are the prohibition on the sales of food in school campuses across Cameroon. This, however, seems to have fallen on deaf ears. School canteens are still operational, with the buying and selling of food still a norm, as our reporters observed while visiting some primary and secondary schools in the economic capital of the country, Douala. Children could be seen buying and eating food from the school canteens without any strong security measures. When asked, the school authorities explained that they are aware of the government measure banning the sales of food but justified their tolerance, outlining the difficulty in respecting the measure, notably on the part of the parents, as Mbu Ngong Eric, head teacher, explained. He thought that we should not allow anybody to come and sell as they used to do before to the children, but that the parents should take the responsibility to prepare what the children will come and eat. But experience from June, when the children of uh, the examination classes came back, experience showed that Parents did not respect that. Should they continued giving money to the children, they come to school, some do not even have anything to eat and all of that. So we, f we felt that we could let the women continue selling. Thanks to the government, that the government had taken some dispositions on how that can be handled. He added that the food vendors are however bound to certain simple hygiene measures to respect before being allowed to sell. We have tried to brief the women who are selling here on how that is to be done. First, they must obtain a medical certificate to show that they are fit to sell food to the children. Secondly, the quality of food matters. Thirdly, how you, how you, put, how you dress before you sell the food to the children is equally another thing. So they need to protect themselves before they sell the food to the children. Voici votre souple fait. Chapa et soupa bipé. Take command. A wind of change has taken place in Mesok, a district in the Upper Nyong Division of the East Region of Cameroon. A new divisional officer, Chafa Isufa Mbipe, has been installed. Described as the man of the job, the SDO Joseph Bertrand Mache instructed the newly installed to work in service to the state and the community, promote social and economic development in his constituency, as well as maintain peace and security. He also added that for his reign to be smooth, he must understand the aspirations and needs of the people. Chafa Isufa Mbipe, who had served as DO of Kumbo Abidimo in the Indian Division of the Southwest Region, replaces Mintiyene Ndo, who had served for four years. In the face of the challenge, like the political discord amongst the people in the recent municipal election, the DO is taxed with handling the situation with objectivity, impartiality and firmness in respect of the law. A host of local authorities and communities from the Northwest region attended the ceremony. As an inspection mission of the Confederation of African Football is expected in Cameroon from Thursday, October 15, 2020, Minister of State, Secretary General at the Presidency of the Republic, Ferdinand Gongo, has given the Minister of Public Health 24 hours to dismantle mixed-shift structures constructed in some stadiums in Yaoundé, Douala and Limbe. 
These structures were specialized COVID-19 treatment centers that never exercised their functions. In Douala, we struggled to have access to the Mbapelepe Stadium to no avail. Some youths were outside and off camera explained that they have been hired to dismantle the structures. Given the manner at which these mixed structures were constructed directly on the playground and the time interval before the inspection from CAF, questions are to suggest how the playground will be after the structures would have been cleared off. It should be noted that the visit is the last one to size up the level of preparedness before the competition begins in January 2021. In Africa, over 90 people have been killed in a crackdown on protest against Guinea's president Alpha Conde's bid to seek a controversial third term in elections. The 82-year-old is vying for re-election on October 18 after pushing through a new constitution in March that critics said was designed to sidestep a two-term limit in the West African country. Opposition to a third Conde term brought turns of thousands of Guineans to the streets from mid-October last year. On Monday, the Anti-Conde Coalition, National Front for the Defense of the Constitution, FNDC, published a tally of 92 protesters killed since the start of the protest. The country's security minister dismissed the FNDC tally saying that he refused to submit to a politically motivated, gruesome accounting. Amnesty International, in a report published on October 1, blamed Guinean security forces for the death of at least 50 protesters and urged the government to hold the perpetrators accountable. Hopes of a new political down bloomed when Conde became Guinea's first democratically elected president in 2010. In a brief notice, Niger's president, Muhammadu Isufu, in an interview with an abroad-based TV station, has confirmed he does not plan to seek a third term in December's presidential vote. He vowed the elections will be free and transparent, insisting on the importance of having strong democratic institutions. The head of state reacted to the freeing of a French aid worker, Sophie Petronin, and also jihadis from Malian jails in exchange for the hostages, insisting on the difficulty of such negotiations. When asked about the attack that killed six French citizens and two Nigerians at a giraffe reserve in Niger, August, he pledged to do everything possible to find the killers and bring them back to justice. He also promised more protection for humanitarian workers in his country. In Nigeria, nearly 40 million students return to school for a new term, hoping to catch up on missed school work. Like no other school year, they are going back to a new set of rules as the government continues the struggle to stop the spread of the COVID-19 virus. This involves the checking of temperature, washing of hands and practicing of social distancing in classrooms. While the students are happy to return to school after a long break, parents are excited as well but have mixed feelings concerning the security and safety of the school and the learners. Private schools are said to be strictly placed to better enforce these security measures unlike the overcrowded poorly funded government schools as they call on government intervention to make up for the lost time. Note that over 10 million Nigerian children are said to not have access to education, nearly a fifth of the world's population. Experts fear the numbers could rise due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now to the USA, President Donald Trump returns to the campaign trail in Florida on Monday for the first time since he announced his COVID-19 diagnosis. He appeared at the outdoor rally without a protective mask and praising his management of the coronavirus pandemic. Trump threw his mask to the crowd as he entered the airport rally in Sanford and repeatedly talked about his recovery from COVID-19. Trump told thousands of supporters standing shoulder to shoulder most without protective mask in court. I went through it now. 
They say I am immune. I feel so powerful. I'll kiss the guys and the beautiful women. I'll just give you a big fat kiss. End of quote. Trump's return to his signature campaign rallies kicked off the three-week journey to election day as new polls showed him losing more ground to Democratic rival Joe Biden in two battleground states that could decide the November 3 contest. European Union foreign ministers have been given the go-ahead on sanctions on President Alexander Lukashenko of Belarus over the violent crackdown on protesters following the country's disputed August 9 election. Chief Joseph Borrell said the disproportionate response had been used in the authorities' reaction to demonstrations as well as a complete lack of will on the part of Belarusian president to bring a democratic and a peaceful solution to the situation. After a council meeting in Luxembourg, the ministers all agreed the EU stands ready to take further restrictive measures against entities and high-stake ranking officials, including Lukashenko. At the meeting, ministers also agreed to sanction those involved in the suspected poisoning of Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny, agreeing with Germany and France that Moscow is responsible for the attack on his life. Borrell explained, legal text must now be prepared before experts from the 27 EU states can give their final approval. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has unveiled a new three-level COVID-19 alert system that will be implemented across England with the levels being decided according to the infection rate, this while waiting for lawmakers to vote on the move. So far, Merseyside in northwest England is the only area in the highest risk category. Gyms, leisure centers, betting shops, adult gaming centers and casinos will be closed, Johnson said. The Prime Minister told Parliament we must act to save lives, adding that he did not want another national lockdown and he understood the frustrations of those frowning at the repression of liberty. The lockdown could see people banned from socializing, with local residents being advised against traveling in and out of affected areas. Johnson said the Liverpool city region will be placed in the very high level from Wednesday, following talks with local leaders as the number of confirmed cases had quadrupled over the past three weeks. He added that there were more people in hospitals now infected with the virus than when the country went into lockdown in the month of March. Still talking coronavirus in China, the entire population of more than 9 million inhabitants in Qingdao will be tested for COVID-19 during the next days after new cases were detected from people who returned from overseas. The coastal city, nearly 700 kilometers southeast of Beijing, reported six new COVID-19 cases and six asymptomatic cases as of October 11, with most of the cases linked to the Quindao Chest Hospital. Mass testing has already been carried out in the Quindao said hospital, which has been placed on lockdown with 114,860 people, staff and patients having tested negative as of Monday. Testing will now be rolled out citywide for the entire population, repeating the type of mass response previously seen in Beijing and other cities across China where clusters of infections have been detected. Those responses have been successful in keeping China's overall infection rate low since the country's initial outbreak was suppressed in March. That has enabled life to return to relative normalcy with more than 600 million tourists traveling this month for Golden Week, a national holiday around mid-autumn festival. That brings us to the end of this edition of the news on DBS TV. Thanks for being with us and keep watching to get more of our programs. Goodbye.